Welcome to the Inner Sanctum. I'm Hyman Brown. I have a strange and frightening story about an onyx eye and the effect it had on the lives and happiness of several people. It's a well-known law of physics that any action has an equal and opposite reaction. If you press down on one side of a seesaw, the other side goes up. If you drop a stone into a puddle of water, the water rises in exact proportion to the displacement of the stone. If good luck is on the face of a coin, wouldn't the other side bring the reverse? It's for you, Kathy. Oh. A birthday present. Now close your eyes and hold out your hand. There. You may open your eyes now. Oh, why, it... It's... It's beautiful. You don't like it? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. It's very unusual. It looks like an eye. Well, the little man I bought it from said it would bring us luck. It's it's onyx. The eye in the onyx makes it valuable as an oddity. Oh, uh, oh! What's the matter? It, it moved. It moved in my hand. Take it away, Jack. Take it away, please. Our mystery drama, The Onyx Eye was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Francis Sternhagen and Michael Wager. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It was on a cold, slushy day in January that Jack Evans found himself on the run-down side street in a section of town in which he had seldom been before. He was weary and cold from job hunting, but he knew he could not go home and face Kathy, his wife, on her birthday without some small gift. Then he saw it, a little curio shop. He looked in the window at the collection of junk jewelry and his eye was attracted to an interesting egg-shaped object dusty and half covered by other things. He immediately knew that this was what he was going to buy for Kathy. Hello? Uh, anybody here? Yes. Can I help you? Oh, I didn't see you. Uh, what can I do for you? I haven't much time. I was just about to close. At 3.15 in the afternoon? Young man... I am closing the doors and leaving. I will not return. I have been here for over 60 years. <laughs> Long enough? Long enough, wouldn't you say? Why, yeah, I guess so. So you will be my last customer, and I will be generous. Name your own price for the thing you want. I haven't made up my mind about anything, but I, I, I did notice... A, a uh, white egg-shaped object in the window. Why... Yes, how did you know? I knew. I remember my mother had a china egg when she used to darn socks. You know what I mean? Yes. And I thought I'd like to get one for my wife. It's her birthday. Ah, yes. I know it isn't much of a present, but... Well, I can't afford more at this time. Oh, it will bring you luck. And if you ask to buy it, I must sell it to you. What? Uh, would you like to see it? I'll uh, take it out of the window... Well, yes, please. Ah, here. Here it is. But I must tell you, this is not a china darning egg. It is onyx. Here, don't drop it. Oh, feels heavy. Heavier than I thought. Uh, turn it over. Good Lord, it's an eye. It looks... Like an eye. If you still want it, you may have it at your price. Whatever you offer, I must accept. But you must be sure you want it. And all that goes with it. Because you will have it with you. Forever. Hello? Is that you, John? Home, Kathy. 
Come on into the kitchen. It's warmer here. Okay, dear. As soon as I get my galoshes off. Oh. Ah, it does feel warmer in here. Oh, the heat's been off all day. I think we've run out of fuel. I've kept the oven on so the house wouldn't freeze. Well, did you call Holder's Fuel and tell them? Oh, a lot of good that would do. We owe them. Well, we're way beyond our credit. Ah, oh, but in weather like this, let me call them. Didn't, didn't you tell them you're expecting a baby and that the cold wouldn't... Phone's out too, Jack. They sent us two warning notices. Oh, great. Fine thing to happen on your birthday. You should have married a guy who could take care of you, Kathy. Oh, you're the nicest husband in the world. And you're going to be a marvelous father. But... No buts. Having you for my husband is enough. Enough for me. What did you do all day, dear? Walked around looking for a job. Any luck? I had one promise from Ellsworth Manufacturing. You think it's a possibility? I wouldn't bank on it. I think the guy in the employment office, Mr. Masrek, was just trying to brush me off. But, look, I, I don't want to talk about that. I want to celebrate. Now, kiss me before I show you your real surprise. <laughs> there. Now. Close your eyes and hold out your hand. There. Now open your eyes. Oh, why... It, it's beautiful. You don't like it. Oh, yes. Yes, it's, it's very unusual. It looks like an eye. But the little man I brought it from said it would bring us luck. It's onyx. The, the eye makes it valuable as an oddity. Oh. Oh, What's the matter? It moved. It moved in my hand. Oh, Kathy, it didn't move. That's just your imagination. Take it back and get your money. I don't want it here. There's something... I don't know how to say it. There's something about it that I... Look, I'm sorry, Kathy, it... but it, it seemed so different, so unusual. Yes, different, but not in a pleasant way. It's ugly. Take it back, dear. I can't take it back. What? I don't want to. The old man said it would bring me luck. Well, we could use a little. I don't believe in luck, Jack, and you know it. I just can't have that evil-looking eye around. Luck or no luck. The phone. It's been off all day. Answer it. Answer it, Jack. Hello? Who? Yes, this is he. Oh, you will? Who is it? It's the fuel company. They're making a delivery in an hour. Yes. Yes, we'll be here. Uh, I I won't have the money to pay you tonight, Mr. Holder. Oh, well... Thanks. Thanks. They're extending our credit. Mr. Holder said that since we've been a good customer for over six years, it... Kathy! It's... It's the eye, don't you get it? It's... It's really changed our luck. Jack, that's childish. Well, how about the phone coming on after they'd cut us off for not paying our bill? I still don't believe that that, that thing had anything to do with it. The phone again. Get it, Kathy. Hello? What? Yes, he's here. Who? Yes. Y yes, I'll get him. Jack, it's Ellsworth Manufacturing calling... A Mr. Masrick. Oh, good morning. Can I help you? Oh, Mr. Evans. Well, we ain't seen you in the store for quite a while. Yes, I, I, I want to pay my bill. Oh, sure. Is that all? Now, just a minute. I'll get out the credit book. Sorry to have let it run so long. I, the bill, I mean. Oh, don't give it another thought. You see, I was out of work. Yeah, and, I and could... so you stayed away. And that was foolish. Now, Harry and me, well, we sized you up as an honest man. Right away, we knew you was okay. The first time you and your wife came in the store. Hey, hey how's she doing? Did she have the baby yet? A couple of months more. Oh, 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 the last couple of months seem mighty long. Take it from me. Nah, that's the bill. Let's see. Evans, Evans, Evie. Ah, oh, here it is, yeah. Uh, uh, 1685. Uh, part of it was for that baby magazine your wife was getting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I can pay it. Just got my first week's pay. Oh, wonderful. You see? Nothing like a baby to bring a couple of luck, Mr. Evans. 
Now, you'll find that Providence provides for a baby. I guess you're right. I'm working for Ellsworth Manufacturing. I'm a foreman. Oh, that's great. Hey, I just thought, why don't you buy a lottery ticket on the state lottery for the baby? It just... Two bucks. And with your luck, I'm sure... I don't want to push it too far, Mrs. Mazza. I got a load of bills to pay before I start taking chances on a million to one shot. Well, someone's got to win. Hey, look. I'll put up the money for you. The ticket will be in your name. If you hit, we split. Nothing to lose and everything to gain. (laughs) It'll be my present to the baby. How about it? Okay. But you're throwing away your money. I never want anything in my life. Mr. Ellsworth? Yes? They told me in the plant that you wanted to see me in your office. Your secretary told me to go right in. Yes, yes. You are Mr. Evans. uh... Jack Evans. Oh, yes, yes. I have your name right in front of me on my pad. Hmm. Uh, Pardon me while I read this memo from your supervisor. Uh, uh, I I would like to say something, if I may. Yes? I I need this job very much. I I, I know I'm new at it, and I, I probably made... Many mistakes. My good man, you're getting yourself needlessly upset. You're in no danger of losing your job. I'm not. Oh, really, I thought I was coming to see you to get fired. You are here to see me because of a memo from your supervisor who praises your hard work and dedication. You see, there is a new opening in supervision on the executive level. A big step up from the plant job you hold now. And we think you can handle it. What do you say? Kathy! Kathy! I've got wonderful news! Kathy! Well, that's strange. She doesn't go out at this hour. Kathy! A note. Jack, dear, I'm getting pains. I thought I'd better not wait. I'm asking Mrs. McCarthy next door to go with me to the hospital. Love, Kathy. Good Lord. It's too early. Too early. Yes? Yes, this is he. Oh, yes, I I, I know. She, she left me a note. How is she? Yes. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be there in ten minutes. Jack. Oh, Jack, I wanted you near me. I was frightened. I, I came as soon as I could, dear. Have I had the baby yet? Yes. Yes. Yes, the baby. You, you, you've you had the baby. It's all over. Is it a boy, Jack? I wanted a little boy. I know you wanted a girl, but we'll have the boy first. And yes, then... but but you're tired now, dear. We'll, we'll talk later. You must rest. No, I'm not tired. I want to talk about it with you. I want to see it. When can I see Kathy, the baby? Kathy, please, try to get some rest. Jack, you're acting so strange. Is something wrong? Darling. The baby. It's dead, isn't it? Oh, Kathy, that I, that I should have to tell you. Oh, my darling. Was it a boy? A beautiful little boy, the doctor said. Well, how did... Why? Why did he have to die? I have no answer, dear. Doctor said everything was going fine, even though the baby was premature. He didn't feel there was any danger. Then suddenly the little heart stopped beating. (laughs) They did everything they could. It was God's will. No. No, no, it was that evil thing. That ugly, frightening thing. That eye. That eye. Kathy. Get rid of it. Throw it away. I felt his evil presence ever since you brought it home. Oh, darling, if if that eye disturbs you, I'll, I'll get rid of it. I... Before I get home, Jack, promise me you'll sell it or give it away. And and if you can't, then destroy it. Yes, Kathy, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. Hey, I was just closing up, mister. It's me, Mrs. Mazza. Oh, 
sure. Mr. Evans. I hate to bother you so late, but I spent most of the evening at the hospital with my wife. And... Yeah, yeah. I heard about that this afternoon. Mrs. McCarthy told me. Because oh, that's a terrible thing to happen to a nice young couple like you two. Uh, I sent your wife a card. Yeah, thank you. Listen, what I came in to ask you... You know this neighborhood well, don't you? Uh-huh. I lived here all my life. Do you know Quentin Street? Oh, about six, seven blocks north. Yeah. Used to be a nice residential street, but uh, it's real run down now. Do you know that little curio shop at the corner of Westerly in Quentin? You mean, did I know it, don't you? Well, it's been closed for ages. Years. No, 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 no. I was in there last week and made a purchase. <laughs> you couldn't have. Well, that building's been empty for nearly 20 years. Windows are broken, it's fallen apart. You know, I remember it when I was a girl. There was an old man. A small old man? Yeah, we were scared of him when I was a kid. But I, I bought something from him, a present for my wife on her birthday. It was just a few weeks ago. Oh, you couldn't have. Where well, the building's been condemned for over five years. It's supposed to be pulled down. But he was there, I tell you, in the shop. January 29th, my wife's birthday. Mr. Evans, I... I seen the ambulance come and take him away exactly 20 years ago. I th think it was in January, too. He, he was dead. If you seen him, you saw a ghost. The pendulum is swinging back. Payment is being demanded. What seemed like one piece of good luck on top of another is now being eroded and lost. The payment burden may get to be even heavier, more than Jack and Kathy Evans can bear. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. When Jack Evans was told that the little curio shop where he had purchased the Onyx Eye had been closed for over... 20 years, he couldn't believe it. The memory of the night when he was in the shop a few weeks before was sharply edged on his mind. The next day, he went to find out for himself. The shop was no longer there. The ancient building in disrepair, broken windows, the door hanging on one hinge, it was not his recollection of the shop. But it was as Mrs. Mazza had described it. That evening, as he returned from work... Mr. Evans? What? Are you Jack Evans? Yes. I'm from the Globe, Mr. Evans. Congratulations. Congratulations? Yeah, you won the big state lottery, Mr. Evans, didn't you know? No, I don't think... Oh, you hey, got... this is rich. You haven't even been told yet? I mean, nothing from the lottery commission, no phone call, no, no. letter, no wire. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There it is. Look, it's right by your door. See, it's a wire. Here. Here you go. Open it. Jack Evans, 38 Mulberry Street. Uh-huh. Well, happy to inform you that your number... Uh, a check for $250,000 will be... Oh, good Lord. Say, are you all right? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm great. Well, you looked a little pale for a minute. Well, I, I guess it sort of got to me for a minute. To think I I wanted to get rid of it. Huh? Well, what? You mean your lottery ticket? No, no, no. The Onyx Eye. Huh? Oh, this money is only half mine. Mrs. Mazu runs a little stationery store on Euclid and 12th. Bought the ticket for me. We're, we're going to split the money if I won. Ah, uh, Mrs. Mazza, Euclid and 12th. Got it. Now, uh, what, what, what about this eye? The, the, the onyx eye you just mentioned? I'd rather not say much about that. It's, it's kind of a good luck charm. Well, have you got it with you? I mean, I'd like a picture, you know, with you holding the good luck charm in your hand. Well, I've got it in the house. Come in. Great. Say, you, you said you were going to get rid of it or you, you wanted to get rid of it? Yeah, it, it bothered me. Just a minute, I... I've got it in a drawer. Ah. Here. Here it is. Say, that is something. Huh. Ugly little thing, isn't it? That eye seems to be looking right at you. Huh? Now, my <laughs> wife's afraid of it, wants me to get rid of it. Are you going to? I don't know. She thinks it brings bad luck. For you, it didn't.
Here we are. Dear, we're home. Yes, Jack, we're home. Off the steps. Yeah. Take it easy. Mm-hmm. Hello. Welcome home. Oh, Mrs. Marza. Mrs. Marza volunteered to come over and get the house in order for your homecoming. Oh, that was kind of you, Mrs. Marza. Oh, nonsense. Don't even say that after what you've both done for Harry and me with, with your good luck charm. Oh, it's beautiful. So many flowers. The entire room is full of flowers. <laughs> A coming home present from Harry and me. I knew you'd like them. You shouldn't have been so extravagant. Oh, after what you've done for us, it's nothing. You know what we're going to do with our share of the money? We're going to sell the store and move to a warmer climate, which will be good for, for Harry's arthritis. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Mrs. Evans, what are you two going to do with your half? Kathy. Kathy, Mrs. Marza was speaking to you. What? W would you pick up the phone, Mrs. Marza? There on the table. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, hello? Uh, yes, this is the Evans residence. Oh, uh, just a minute. Oh, uh, Kathy, someone on the phone for you. The man said that the Globe newspaper. Oh, well, that newspaper reporter again. He called me several times at the hospital. I don't want to speak to him. Oh. H hello? Oh, well, uh, uh, she's busy and can't talk. What? Well, she what? Sell? Are you crazy? You, you asking her to sell her luck? You, you're out of your mind, mister. Oh, you know... He wanted to buy your onyx eye. Your luck. Now, how do you like that? I? Have you still got that terrible thing, Jack? Oh, Kathy, I haven't had a chance to get rid of it. You promised. You promised, Jack. You swore to me you would get rid of that ugly Kathy. eye before I came home. You promised now, Kathy, me that faithfully in Kathy, the hospital. calm down. You must you be lied like to this. me. You know what misery that thing has caused us. It took my baby from me. Kathy. It killed my baby. Oh, oh look, uh, Mrs. Evans, if you really mean that, I, I'll take it. I'll buy it. Yes, yes, it's yours. A present. You don't have to buy it. Give it to her, Jack. Give it to but her. Kathy. Get rid of that thing. That evil thing. Or, or I'll go away. You'll never see me again. All right. O all right, Kathy. I, I'll do anything you say. Here... Mrs. Maza, I hope it brings you better luck than it has us. Well, Jack, like my choice of restaurants? I've never eaten in a place like this before. Well, you'd better start getting used to it. The firm has a charge account here. We do most of our business entertaining here. Oh, oh yes, yes, Peter Fairley told me. That all he told you? Jack, we like you. When you came into that money, when you won the lottery, you didn't change. We all thought you'd buy cars, clothes, jewelry, a new house. But you took it all in your stride. No fuss, no feathers. Made a big impression on the board, I can tell you. I wasn't trying to make an impression, Mr. Ellsworth. We knew that, Jack. We all knew that. You were just that kind of a man. Which brings me to what I started to say a moment ago. Jack, the board of directors has voted to make you an officer of the company. Oh. You are now a vice president of Ellsworth Manufacturing Incorporated. Oh. oh, you deserve the job, Jack. But it, it is so incredible. They hardly know you, and they give you this big position. I couldn't believe this was all happening to me at all. <laughs> Happened so fast. Oh, I'm so happy for you, darling. And you know, it was really you, your ability, your personality that put you where you are. It wasn't some stupid good luck uh -huh. charm, some magical eye. Oh, I'm so relieved since that thing is out of the house. I'm sleeping better. Feeling better? Oh, that reminds me. I went to the doctor today. He did some tests and a complete examination. What did he say about having another baby? He seemed very optimistic. He said he'd get back to me as soon as he had all the results from the test. Ah, good. I'll, I'll, I'll get it, Kathy. Hello? Oh, hello, uh, Mr. Evans? Yes, oh, Mrs. Marza? I'm sorry to bother you and your missus so late at night. Oh, it's not so late. We haven't gone to bed yet. Oh, that's good. Look, I, I'm a little worried. I, I had to talk to you. Could I come over? Well, it is right... 
Well, couldn't it wait until tomorrow, Mrs. Mazza? I'm so upset. I, I wouldn't sleep a wink if I waited till tomorrow. Well, hold the phone for a second. It's Mrs. Mazza. She seems upset, wants to come over. Well, let her come. She won't stay very long. Mrs. Mazza? Yes. Uh, come over, but please, uh, remember, Kathy's not fully recovered oh, and... Oh, it'll take me just a few minutes. Thank you. I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> There she is, Jack. Let her in. Okay. I got it. Come in, Mrs. Mazza. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. No bother for a friend. Come in. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Mazza. Sit down, won't you? No, I'm only going to stay a minute. I, I just had to tell you. It's gone. What? The eye. The onyx eye. Gone? No. No. Now, Kathy. Kathy, get hold of yourself. Mrs. Mazza, I think... It's gone, I tell you. I, I wrapped it in an old piece of chamois in my drawer in the bedroom dresser. Tonight I went to look at it. It was gone, and the chamois was still there. Stolen? But what else could it be? What else? It could have come back here. Did you stop to think of that? It could have returned to us. Returned to destroy us. I see that superstitious nonsense, and you know it. Mrs. Mazza, my guess is that it's stolen. Someone must have known that we'd given it to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I suppose you're right. Oh, what a pity. Harry said that just having it in the house made him feel good. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry to have bothered you. I, I'll go now. Want me to walk you home, Mrs. Muzz? It's, it is late. Oh, no, I'm okay. I know the neighborhood. And uh, good night. Good night. You're sure you'll be all right going home alone? Oh, sure. Jack, sure. look. On the doorstep. What? Oh, my God. Oh, it's the onyx eye. It's come back. It's come back. Well, quick, look outside. See if anyone's near. No, no one. There's not a living soul on the street. It's come back. We'll never get rid of it. You have made an offer, and now you must go through with it. No, we don't want to take it back, please. That is impossible. I cannot take it back. You have made a bargain, and you must hold to your word. Is there no way to be rid of it? I told you, you must be sure you want it, and all that goes with it, it will be with you forever. <sighs> Wait, oh, oh, man, there must be some Jack, way. Jack, uh, Jack, uh, darling, some, Jack. Something that would... You're dreaming, free. Jack. Listen to me. Wake up. Oh, man, listen. Please, Jack, uh, listen uh, to me, Jack. What? Jack, you're having oh. a bad dream. Oh, Kathy, darling. You were dreaming, tossing in your sleep. Oh, oh, what a nightmare, frustrating dream. You seem to be talking to someone, uh, pleading. I... Uh, I was dreaming of that little old man who sold me the onyx eye. I I begged him to take it back or tell me how to get rid of it. He gave me no answer except that I was compelled to keep it. Forever? Forever. Wait a minute. There's something in the back of my mind. If I could think of what it is, he'd be able... A phone? This hour. 4.15 in the morning. Hello. Yes, this is he. Who? St. Joseph's Hospital. Yes. Yes, I see. Asked you to call me. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll come immediately. Thank you. What is it? Mr. Mazza. Stroke. Mrs. Mazza asked them to call me. She wants me to come to the hospital. It was that thing. Oh, no. That's becoming an obsession with you. Kathy, can't you forget it? Don't you see? Mr. Mazza benefited from the luck, the lottery ticket. And now he's paying for it, as we have. Like some evil thing, the power of the evil eye reaches out to crush all who have benefited from its luck. Its influence keeps spreading like a pool of slimy, polluted water, defiling everything it touches. 
I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Jack went to the hospital that night and sat waiting with the wife of the stricken man through the long gray dawn. Finally, the doctor came with the news. The news that Mr. Mazza had died. His last words before the end was, strangely enough, the eye, the lucky eye, how wonderful to have it. At the cemetery, several days later, Mrs. Mazza was heard to repeat almost the identical sentiment. Oh, he was so happy the last few days of his life. Happier than I've seen him in years. Mrs. Mazza, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we that, that we involved you and your husband in our... I, I don't know how to say it. I, We feel responsible. Oh, no. No, no, you got it all wrong. I, I told you he was happy. You, you brought us luck. Bad luck. No, no, it was good. Even if it was only for a few days... A few hours. It it was like a dream come true. But, Mrs. Mazza, what will you do now? What does it matter? I'm not sad. I'll manage. I'm happy to know that Harry got something good that that made him feel good before he passed away. No. No, no, you're wrong. I can't understand you. You wish for death. That's not happiness. I'd give up everything in this world, everything. All the comforts, even necessities to have my baby with me, alive and warm in my arms, next to my heart, anything for that. Kathy, people are looking at you, please. Let them look, let them look. In respect for the dead. I have no respect for the dead, for this stupid ceremony of Kathy. death, for the soothing words that close your mind and drug you into acceptance. Kathy, please, they're lowering the coffin. Are they? I know something else that should be buried in the ground and covered up forever. This. I, you brought it here. To bury it. There. Oh, oh, you, oh. you threw it in the grave. You threw it away. Yes, I'm burying it. Burying it forever. Hello? Uh, hello, Mr. Evans. This is Peter Cawley. You know me. I'm the reporter on the Globe. I mean, I'm the guy who interviewed you when you won the lottery. What do you want? I'm in the middle of dinner. Well, I see that you found an envelope on the street with over $2,000 in it and that you turned it into the police. That's right. <laughs> well, you don't seem very excited about it. 2000 bucks seems like a lot of money to me. It's not my money. Yeah, but if the owner doesn't come forth to identify it, it is going to be yours, right? Really, Mr... I mean, that, that's right, isn't it? Is this why you called me to find that out? No, no, no. I called you because I see a continuation of the good luck story I did on you when you won the lottery. Sorry to disappoint you. I no longer have the eye. Oh, come on, Mr. Evans. Don't give me that. I haven't got it. That's the truth. It's gone. Buried. You mean, uh... You hit it someplace to keep from losing it? I mean, we buried it to get rid of it. To lose it forever. Jack, your dinner is getting cold. Coming right in. Who was it? Oh, that reporter. You know the one. He wanted to do a story about my finding that money. I told him I didn't want to talk about it. You know, Jack, you found that envelope the morning after Mr. Maz's funeral. Yes, well, why should that make you pucker your brows? Well, it's... It's the kind of thing that would happen when we had that... But we no longer had it then. Which only goes to prove what I've said. All that superstition about good luck and bad luck is childish nonsense. Now, let's forget it, shall we? <laughs> what did you do today? Oh, I did the shopping. Went to the cleaners to pick up your suit. Oh, And I went around to the post office to pick up that parcel. What parcel? Don't you remember last Wednesday when we came home? From Mr. Maz's funeral? Yes. Well? There was that slip from the post office saying that they had tried to deliver a parcel, but we weren't home. Oh, oh, no. Yes, yes, I remember. Well, I went over this afternoon and picked it up. It's over there on the desk. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's in it. Jack... Don't open it. What? Don't open it. It's that eye. It's come back. 
Then I've got to know. I've got to know. Oh, good Lord. I was right. I was right. It has come back. We'll never get away from oh, it. Stop it. Stop it. For God, I'll smash it to bits. Grind it into dust. shattered. We are free of it now. Come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Ellsworth? Oh, yes, Jack. Come in. Come in. Sit down. Thank you. Jack, I, uh, I see you've been having a little trouble. About the lottery ticket? I've uh, been in the papers. Featured quite um, prominently. I can say the same thing to you that I told to the district attorney. I did not know the ticket was a forgery. Uh, yes, I, yes, yes, yes. I, I have returned my winnings to the state lottery commission. Mrs. Maza has returned her share also. You have behaved very honorably in the whole matter. I myself have said that to the board. This was brought up to the board? It had to be, Jack. You see, you occupy a very unique... Uh, a very sensitive position in our company. I don't understand how this could affect the company. My boy, a company such as ours is only as good as our reputation. I get it, Mr. Ellsworth. No. I know why you called to talk to me. Jack, try and see my side. You are no longer an asset to Ellsworth Manufacturing. You are a liability. Now, I'll tell you what we are prepared to do. We shall give you a letter with the very highest praise for your ability and character. We shall give you three months' salary as termination pay and... Your best wishes for my future. Is that you, Jack? Yes, Kathy. I... I've got something to tell you, Jack. Yes? It's not good. I'm prepared for... Anything. What is it? There's no chance, Jack. We can't have another child. Oh, of course we can, darling. We'll, we'll go to another doctor. We'll, we'll leave here, start fresh someplace else. Sometimes a change of scene or environment. Or... It's no use. It's happened a million times. Doctors can be mistaken. No, Jack. Nothing will ever be right for us oh, again. Oh, Kathy, how can you say that? I'm not giving up. We'll go away. You'll see things will be good again. How could you go? You couldn't leave your job. <laughs> what job? I've been let go, fired. Oh, Jack. Darling. I knew it. I knew it when I saw... Look, Jack. Look what's on the floor next to the window. Oh, no. No. Your good luck piece. But I... I smashed it. The dust swept it up, put it in a cloth bag, weighted it, dropped it off at the ferry boat in the middle of the harbor. Look at it. Not a scratch. Not a crack. And that eye, that evil eye glaring at us. How did it get there? I don't know. I didn't see it this morning. And then when the phone rang, I came in here to answer it. And when I finished the conversation on the phone, I saw it. I screamed and ran out of the house. I'm going to beat this thing. There's some way to get rid of it. There has got to be. I I remember there was something that little man said, but it, it seems blurred in my mind. I keep reaching for it, but it gets away from me. You can't give it away. When we gave it to Mrs. Maza, it returned. But how could the old man give it to me? He did give it to me. And the door. Get it, Jack. I'll go into the bedroom and finish packing. Start packing for me, too. We'll go together. All right, dear. Not that I expect it will do us much good to run. Hi, Mr. Evans. You. Hey, hey, wait, wait, listen. Leave us alone. Can't you stay away from us? No, no, please, I've got good news. I don't want to hear it. It always turns out bad. Oh, please, now, don't shut the door, okay? <sighs> okay, what is it? Now, first, that money hasn't been claimed. You know the money you found? It'll be released to you at the end of the 30-day waiting period. I won't be here to claim it. Well, why? You going away? Yes. Because you lost your job? That's only part of it. But you haven't lost it. What do you mean? 
Look, the Globe carried the entire story in this afternoon's edition about how you were innocent and also that it was rumored that you had lost your job with Ellsworth Manufacturing because of the scandal. Yeah, that's about it. Well, 20 minutes after the paper hit the street, the paper got a call from Mr. Ellsworth himself denying the story and saying that the company had never doubted your integrity and all that sort of guff. You know, he told our editor to retract that story tomorrow or face a possible lawsuit. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> Only hurts when you laugh, huh? huh? You going back to Ellsworth? No, I'm going away. Away from this place for good. You're serious? Dead serious. I want that good luck charm. That onyx eye. You don't. I want it. I know what it's done for you, and it could it's maybe... It's done do... nothing good for me. We've had nothing but grief and humiliation from it. I we... want it, and I'll give you $5,000, all I have. I want it. If you offer to purchase, I must accept. That's it. That's what he said to me. Then you'll let me have it? Look, I must warn you, it will bring you nothing, and its gifts are empty. And you'll pay heavily for all you get. Or think you get. I want it. I insist that you sell it to me. Very well. You are sure you want it. And all that goes with it. I'll get it for you. I've got the money with me in cash. Here. Here. Hold out your hand. Yeah. There. There. And here's the payment. And thanks. Thanks for parting with it. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. I'll be back in a moment with a final thought. The Onyx Eye is now in the possession of a new owner, a new master. Despite the warning Jack Evans gave him that he would pay for every piece of good luck, pay perhaps with his blood or the happiness of those near him, the new owner steps out into the world clutching the evil talisman in his hand with his heart full of hope. Our cast included Francis Sternhagen, Michael Wager, William Redfield, Bryna Rayburn, and Sidney Sloan. Associate Director... Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you 